Welcome to the 9040 EPL Aries Demo Kit using status panels. At the end of the session you should be able to find numeric and bit status, clear controller errors, reset your EPL on can open networks, test I.O. points, and use the servo loop status to identify motion issues. In this session we'll focus on the status panels. Our unit is already configured so I'm going to connect via my USB connection. I'm going to go to status panels. Under status panels we have the common status panel, numeric status, bit status, a CPU load status screen, and a servo loop status. Let's begin with the common status panel. We can see on the common status panel that I am communicating with the PC. Currently my can open and EPL networks are off. My drives are faulted and I have a kill all motion request. We can see that we can determine our actual commanded and velocity for each axis. Our motion enable is powered. It gives us an enable input OK. If we did not have power to our enable input, we would see the fault here. From this screen, we can clear all of our kill motion requests as long as there is no current error status preventing that. So let's do a clear all kills. We have no uh, problems that are currently preventing us from clearing those. So we can see now that we no longer have a kill all motion request for our axes. This screen shows axes 0 through 7 by default, but it also displays axes 8 through 15. So we can see uh, the status of all 16 axes. From this screen, we can also enable our EPL network. You can see that the EPL came up and is operational with no errors. We can start our can open network. The network is operational and we have no errors. Currently, we have no programs running. We are not moving. We have no kill commands. As long as there are no hard faults or configuration errors, I should be able to clear my drive faults by turning on the two drives. To do that, we're going to go to the terminal emulator. To enable my drives, I'm going to switch to PROG0. In order to turn on the drives using their aliases, I need to be in the program which is associated with the master they're assigned to. Since these drives are assigned to master 0, I need to switch to program 0 to turn them on by their aliases. To turn them on, I'm going to do a drive on X. And a drive on Y. I could have done a drive on X space Y here as well. I'm going to return to the common status panel. You can see now that the drives are enabled. We have no faults. Everything looks good. We can see our actual and commanded position for the drives. And we can see that they're not moving. One nice feature of the panel here is if we hover over the top of one of these objects, it'll give us the parameter numbers. So we can see that our parameter number is 12290. And the commanded is P12295. 
Sometimes it takes a little work to get the hover to show you the value. If you already know the parameter that you want to view or bit status that you'd like to view, instead of coming to this screen, we can go to the numeric status panel where every parameter in the ACR9000 is displayed. So let's go to the numeric status. From here, we can check the values uh, stored in all of the parameters. That is one of the nice things about the ACR. You know, everything's a parameter and everything's a bit. So if I need to know a value, I just need to know its parameter number. Uh, encoder position, uh, we can take a look at uh, things like the PLC parameters, miscellaneous parameters, master parameters, etc. Uh, we can see what's going on on our EPL network. Under each one of these parameters, we also have a subparameter. So we can see, um, in this case, for this object, we can look at the encoder, steppers, DAX, or the ADC parameters. And once we've picked one, we can have another subcategory in this where we want to know, in this case, encoder position or encoder velocity. Do we know it's absolute revolutions? The next status screen is the bit status. The bit status screen contains all of those error conditions. It has all of our inputs. It has everything that we trigger uh, as far as a bit. By default, it comes up with our onboard I.O. and user flags. If this was a 9030, uh, we would have onboard I.O. But in the case of our EPL network, our drives actually have the I.O. So let's take a look at that. We can open this up and we'll see that besides the onboard I.O., we have our expansion I.O. flags, master flags, access flags, program flags, so on and so forth, until we come down to EPL flags. I'm going to drop on the EPL flags here. So here's our network flags by default. We can see that the EPL controller is installed, the network is operational, the network start has not failed. So if we're having trouble getting our network to start, we can come here and look and see what flags are set. I want to look at the onboard I.O. though. So I'm going to take a look under the subcategory. and I want to look at my digital inputs. Now if I press buttons on our uh, demo unit here, we can see that I'm pressing input one, pressing input two. So we can test our installation from here. Uh, I can take a look and see if my outputs are turned on and maybe if I'm having trouble on the machine um, I can determine whether or not I'm actually turning it on and it's some other problem. So here's all of our digital inputs. If we take a look under the master flags we can see that uh, we have a lot of uh, information about the master. Is it accelerating, decelerating? Are we in motion? This bit 516 is an important bit. It tells us whether or not we've completed our motion or not. Or feed holding. Um, have we exceeded our torque? Besides the primary flags, we have additional flags, uh, secondary flags, The mode it's in, uh, we have tertiary flags. Uh, is it doing spline moves, NURBS? And we have our quaternary flags.
You can see if it's move on triggers on position, uh, what our velocity limit, or if it's outside our velocity limit, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of information here. Uh, and all of this information, since it's assigned already to a fixed bit or fixed parameter, when you move from application to application, it never changes. So once you know where these are, you always know where these are. And tons of information by axis. All of this information can also be used in your HMI when you connect it. You just have to point at that bit or parameter. To see what kind of uh, load our applications putting on the processor, let's say we have a very large application we want to know how much we're loading down the CPU. We can see here uh, if we're having trouble getting our moves to execute, possibly we have uh, too many programs or too many things happening at the same time. We can come in here to the CPU load status and find out. A very important tool in here is the servo loop status. The servo loop status screen gives us a wealth of data about what's going on in our drive. We know that the commanded position is not actually the position that it's sending it to. The current position uh, could have a gear offset, a jog offset, a cam offset. So when we move it, or we tell it to move, it has to sum all these things up. So if I have a gearing offset, it takes my commanded position and my gear offset, and that sends it to the primary set point. And if we're using the ball screw offset or the backlash offset, that gets added or subtracted to that, mo to that move, which generates our secondary set point. And this is important. Later when we do the um, scopes, we need to know what to use when we're watching the move profile. We don't want to use its current position, we'll want to use its secondary set point, because that's actually uh, where it's supposed to be moving to. We can see that our secondary set point and actual position are very close. We have a following error of two encoder counts. Uh, we don't have any additional proportional integral terms to be added to this uh, for our summation point and no digital filtering or filter output and no limit to our torque. So if you're getting motion and you think it should be stationary, come in here. It's possible that you have a jog offset set, uh, something left over from a camming operation. Maybe there's been a ball screw offset input and you're not aware of it, which is generating this unintentional motion or this unexpected movement. So go ahead and use this tool. This is uh, very important when you're getting motion you don't expect or you're not getting the full range of motion that you would expect. If I take a hold of one of these uh, drives here, say my x-axis, you can see that uh, my following error is increasing. And I can tell you from holding on to the motor that it is increasing the current that it's putting out, trying to bring it back into position. You can see that once I've let go of it, I now have a following error of uh, minus one to minus two counts again. So that concludes our session for the status panels. I hope this has been of a help.
This has been the 9040 EPL Aries Using Status Panels. Key points to remember from this presentation are that the status screens contain all of the numeric and bit status contained in the ACR. The common status panel also has tools to clear errors and restart the EPL and can open networks. When you're commissioning a machine, the status screens are beneficial in showing you the status of your I.O. and parameters. If you're getting motion other than what you command, check the servo status panel for any offsets, gearing, etc. Thank you for your attention and I hope this has been of use to you.